fans continue to be coming into this great center court here at York University. Andre Agassi packs them in like no one else in our sport. In fact, he was out here at nearly midnight last night playing in a doubles match, and many, many thousands of people stayed around for that one. Andre Agassi, 24 years old. Back in 1988, he was ranked number three in the world. Now, as we've said, he's dropped down to 20, Cliff. I mean, interesting thing to me is the guy had wrist surgery in December, and then he comes back. He starts out in Scottsdale on his favorite hard court service, uh, surface. Rather, he wins that, and then you know, he gets to the final at the lift. It hasn't been a great year for him since that, but you know, everybody says, Agus, you never know what to expect from him, and I guess that's uh, that's true. Takes Todd Martin, who's a heck of a fine player, to five sets at Wimbledon. Hasn't been a great year for him. Hasn't been a bad year, but look at the way he's dressing now. It's unbelievable. He comes out with stuff like this, and you have got to pay attention to this man. He's, he just, he, he demands it. You're right. Well, he, this is a, his latest line of clothing, including his brand new shoes. He said, I told Nike I wanted to go with something more casual, something that guys would wear skateboarding down the street. He said, I didn't want a line that only tennis players would buy or tennis players would like. He's trying to appeal to the common man. And of course, Nike will, 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 will get on that bandwagon in a minute because that's the kind of company they are. Look at look at him. I, this is quite interesting. Now, you've seen some guys in the you know the baggy shorts and stuff at Wimbledon that I wasn't really enamored with immediately. And this doesn't exactly, I mean, it's not something that I'd wear this Sunday afternoon, but I think it looks good. Yeah. I yeah. really do. Well. <laughs> it's an attention there, getter. There's no two ways about that. But actually, he's an attention getter no matter what you put him. Put, what, what do you put on his body? He's a uh, terrific player to watch. He's got flashy shots. Forget the way that he dresses. He's the Cliff Drysdale of his I generation. Let's, let's face it, that's what this boy is. I wish. His uh, opponent is far less of a, a flashy man and with really much less of a flashy game. But Jakob Lasik is a very solid player, 29 years old. He's been on the tour an awful long time. And though he spent the first two years living in Prague, Czechoslovakia, he considers himself very much a Swiss. Yeah, the thing is, you say you're born in Prague, and there are so many people from Czechoslovakia left there a long time. He's he's Swiss through and through, and uh, uh, look at him, he looks Swiss. How could he be anything <laughs> other than Swiss? It's kind of like the White Knight, you know, and Darth Vader on the other side. A couple of years ago, he had gotten all the way up to number seven in the world. Why would a guy like this be down to the 50s now? Because I don't think he has enough power for the modern game. It's very simple. I, I mean, he's a great guy. he's a great player. He's got he's got all the shots. Uh, he can come in. He can stay back. I remember him all those years ago. Do you remember that time when I think it was 1988? He was in a in a car accident in Switzerland, and he had to uh, get off the tour for about five months. That's exactly right. Came back and played some great tennis. In fact, uh, at the year-ending event in. Um, in New York at Madison Square Garden. He had a few really great wins. And at that time, I thought that he could be a top five material. It didn't turn out to be that way. So he's got all the shots. He just, for the modern game, doesn't have the power. And I don't think he's got enough power tonight to beat Agassi, honestly. Well, in fact, he did. That, that year you're talking about was back in 88, and he beat Agassi. The first time they played, that was at the Masters on a carpet court. Then Agassi beat him at the French Open on clay in 91. Plasek beat him again in Milan on a faster court. Uh, in 92 and then in 92 of course uh, it was the Davis Cup match where he got tuned classic I mean I guess he killed him one two and two and that was the last time they met it's a big match that was too because uh, remember Jim Courier he went down to Mark Rosset of Switzerland there was in the Swiss and the USA were playing in the final match so it was 1-1 after this and then and remember that great doubles match, match McEnroe and Pete Sampras got together yeah, they won the uh, they won the doubles and then finally the USA put them away in the and day number three. Close match, though. Closer than a lot of people expected. Time. There are a lot of Andre fans screaming tonight. I wonder what they think about this outfit. Close the gates, please. You gotta love it. <laughs> Andre Agassi. Again, he's ranked 20 in the world. Here he is seated number eight. Quite a few seeds have dropped out. Today was uh, rather a dark day for some of the seeds. Andre Agassi is in the top section of the draw. We'll be showing you that. Only one seed is, has lost in the top section, but the bottom half has really bottomed out with four seeds gone. And the big story, of course, is that our number two seed here, Todd Martin, had to withdraw. He had split sets with Amos Monsdorf of Israel, had to retire after the second. He had, with the, he had heavily taped his upper right leg, but had to Thank withdraw with, a, with that injury. So that's bad news. And, of course, the fifth First seed, lost Peter Korda, he lost earlier today, and that was a bit of a surprise. 
As you can see, on the very first day, Patrick Rafter lost. He's in the top half of the draw. All the other seeds that are out, Corda, Krixian, Volkov, Martin, on the bottom half. First point. Fifteen. And so we should mention that Jim Courier is really the guy. I mean, it sure looks like the way has been cleared for him. It's opened up for him down there, hasn't it? Talking to Todd Martin just a moment ago in the locker room. He said he was trying to get through that match. He said, yeah, tiebreaker first. He said, if I got in the tiebreaker in the second, anything could have happened. But when I lost it, he said that was it. Hey. Hey. One thing to uh, try to break Agassi's serve. The problem is to hold serve against Agassi because his return is so darn good. Same kind of thing you say about playing against Jim Courier. shot that he has is the forehand Agassi. It's very interesting to see how it works as he takes the thing back right about there. Freeze it for me. Do you see how now he straightens it out? He doesn't let the racket go down underneath the ball and then over it. Let it go, boys. Bam! He hits through the ball and that's where he gets all the power. Fantastic stuff. 30 His 15. best shot. And now 30 all. Cliff, we might actually be seeing tonight with Plasic serving to Agassi that the Agassi returns will be hit, struck harder than the Plasic serve. I mean, he could really do that. Absolutely. 172 kilometer an hour to serve the last one. <laughs> Going for the big one again that time, total miss hit. I mean, that happens. The thing about Ag what you watch him play, what makes it so fun, is that there's so little margin for error. He's going for the big shot, goes in, that's great, misses it, he's in trouble. Not a lot of margin. That's a live picture of Todd Morgan at the second seed who was forced to withdraw after losing the second set in his match against Amos Monsorf. That only happened about two hours ago. Yeah, that's good court coverage. I was saying that Agassi doesn't get into the net too much. Well, he does from time to time, especially when he sets it up well, like he does on this shot here. See, he has that forehand talking about just a moment ago, and then there's an, an isolation of the Swiss. He comes in here, he makes the volley, but he's in good position now. So this guy is way, way out of things, and I guess all he's got to do is stretch over there, put it into an open court. Winner. Deuce. Decided which way to go and it decided against the server. Close. Watch this again here. Yeah. Look at this. Comes in. Bang. Now he hits this one. Now watch the ball there. So this, what, now what do I want to do? And he stayed up there for what feels like seconds and dropped back on the Swiss side. Break point. Do you? Not an easy way to begin a match against Andre Agassi to immediately be challenged on your serve. There's another one of those two-handers down the line. I like that shot a lot. 
It is very difficult to pick, and the two-hander can do that, see? Take a look at the shot here. Look how he moves into it. See how the shoulders go right into the ball, and his body is at an angle now there as he hits it. And then he comes in behind it. He's in great position, puts the volley away, break point again. Game Agassi, first game. There it is, already. Andre Agassi has taken control of this match. He'll be serving when we come back. Another look at the seeds here at the Canadian Open. Sergi Bruguera, who had a very easy time of it today. He is on through. Todd Martin, out. Michael Chang has yet to play. He plays Jeremy Bates tonight. In fact, Jim Courier, he played well against Nicholas Pereira. Beat him in straights. Corda, out as well. Wayne Pereira came through in three. Mark Rosé is, is also uh, playing pretty well. And Agassi, of course, on now. First serve of the match. Oh. Some of the lesser seeds have been beaten, as you can see. Patrick Rafter, he went out. He was the first guy out of here. Volkov was also taken out. Jaime Iziga is in. Lendl, for the fourth time in his career, beat someone 0 and 0 today. That was Wally Masur. Christine also lost today. Long. Of the other seeds, Carson Brosh had to squeak by in three sets. Maladia Washington came through. An easy hold for Agassi. Now two zip in the first set. Andre Agassi and Michael Chang, before this event began, played in a, um, an exhibition match, made quite a bit of money. And it was a, a, a rousing success. It was, uh, it was for an AIDS benefit. And Andre, Andre's girlfriend, Brooke Shields, was here for that. She went home a couple of days ago. Love 15. Take a look at this again. Now he gets in. This is a great serve that he makes here. Now he gets into the net. Now take a look at this. Here, he's in trouble here. Let's freeze it right here, boys. Freeze it. Now look at what Andre Agus is going to do. Go down the line, go cross court. He can hit the lob. What does he do? Let it go right down the middle while the Swiss man thinks it's going to go down to his backhand side. He tries to cover it too late. Love 15. Love 13. He is so explosive on the return, Mary. Here's a guy who does not know the word defense, no matter how hard you hit it to him. Look at that. Six love in winners. First set. Oh! Tell you what, I like the Hlasek serve motion. It's got a very pure quality about him. I mean, he's serving well. The question is, he's not serving well enough against the return of Agassi. Love 40. Lasek on serve, even all of his strokes, he looks very uh, sort of tin soldiery. Very correct. 15. He's a correct kind of a guy. He really is. Yeah. He's, there's well, there's nothing he incorrect about this no. guy. Very but you know what I mean? A little, you know. Uh, yeah, I know what you, you know, mean. He's stiff. He's a, yeah, he is a stiff. Still break point. <laughs> Missed it. Uh, shanked that one a little bit. Wrapped around his frame. Tough shot to make from that position there. I mean, when you go for that, if you hit it in, it's going to be a winner. 
That's how the baseliners like Agassi and Courier play. Still break point for Agassi. Drop volley winner. Well played. He saw Agassi was out of court. This is a good play from Hlasek. Watch this. Now, he makes this good approach shot, too. That's not the slice approach. He goes right through the ball, gets into the net, anticipates this one where it's going to go. And you see how he, at the point where he loosened that wrist just a little bit, that's what allows you to hit the drop volley well. Hold on to it firm. It's going to go deep. Come on. Hey. Advantage Hlasek. Four points in a row, Lassik. Agassi had... Facing a couple of break points. Three. He's already got one break. Game Lassik. Lassik holds. Good news for him, because Agassi's looking pretty good tonight. Agassi leads two games to one. It's the beach, Brad Gilbert, who it used to not be too formal of a deal, but now he's he's Andre Agassi's coach. Looking looking pretty snappy tonight. I don't know why he's got his sunglasses on because it is nighttime. But uh, you know he's doing the Behind whole the, court, the whole deuce quickly, thing. Please. Brad Gilbert, a very fine player in his own right. He had a a, a bit of a stomach pull, so he declined a, an invitation to play at the Canadian Open this year. But uh, I saw him out there hitting the other day against Andre and. Uh, you know, he could still play ball. He could still drive a lot Here's of people crazy. Please. Players are waiting. You got that right. That was his strong suit. Still is his strong suit. He drive you crazy. Remember how I used to uh, take Becker to town? No. That's really a bad shot. I don't know what he was trying to do. You try and analyze that shot and you say, wait a second, he's got to have been thinking something else. It must have been a, a much better drop shot that he was trying to hit, but it stood right up there and Agassi ate it for lunch. The number seven seed, Big Bird, Mark <laughs> Rosé of Switzerland. <laughs> He's checking out the situation here. He won four and four today to get himself into the third round. He next plays Jason Stoltenberg, the Aussie, who's been playing some pretty good ball this, this last month. Yeah. yeah. Tough decision for Jakob Lasek. Do you come in immediately? Well, if you do, you can be in a lot of trouble. Here's the kind of thing that he faces. Okay, here's the slice. Now he says, okay, I'm going to go in. But it's dangerous because look what the kind of shots that Agassi comes up with. Now he tries for a drop volley. Doesn't work. Agassi gets to a cross-court winner. Yes. 40 love. Yeah, no yeah, trouble with that one. Agassi had every which way to go. Took the easy route. Agassi leads Lasek was one. nowhere near that one. Maintains the lead. Andre Agassi stuck up for God earlier this week, which <laughs> he uh, he was playing in this AIDS exhibition with Chang. They put on a great show, and afterwards they were speaking about AIDS. Agassi uh, Agassi say you know he hates the idea that uh, you know there are some people who say God is causing AIDS. You know, uh, and Agassi said, to say God is judging it and that aid is God's wrath is quite honestly ah! giving God a bad rap. Agassi says, a lot of people do that, and it bothers me because he, meaning God, he's really not a bad guy. Love 30. Another one who thinks that God is not a bad guy is the man that he was playing against in that exhibition, Michael Chang. Yeah. Here it is again in this forehand from Agassi that he is enjoying tonight a lot. Everyone's liking it but Lassick. Love 30. He's on the wrong end of that forehand. Oh. That 
Oh, it sails it. just a bit. I said to uh, Brad Gilbert, what are the guys, what are you guys working on? And he said, not anything stroke-wise. We're just practicing a lot more the serve, for example, on Agassi. But he said he's in excellent condition, he's in good shape, and he's practicing and working out a lot. Oh. 15.40 now. A couple more break points against the classic serve. All these people up here? I'm sorry, 30 all. All those people in the upper echelons of this stadium are allowed to wander around now during the points. You don't have to wait and hang around till a, a court change. This is a great new rule on the ATP Tour. Thirty forty. Here's a... Uh, our fan cam, fans eye view. See, now, normally this guy, he, people would be telling him, sit down, yeah. sit down. Agassi would be saying, hey, what's going on there? Joe, sit down. Give it. Now he's allowed to do that. Up in the, uh, you know, in the lower level, you're not allowed to do that. It could be too distracting. There you go. <laughs> Break point. Deuce. Anyway, that's a nice new change, a fan-friendly change. And once the, the people, you know, a lot of these people, they don't even know they're allowed to move around. That woman right there, she could be waving, flapping her arms right now if she wanted to. But she's too well-bred for it. Deuce. Ace. Agassi doesn't Agassi. like it. Uh, Agassi wants it wide. Walking over there to the Lions person. Let me see. You what know what? Lasik is, is, is going along with Agassi. That's new. Second serve. No fuss made about that at all. That was a nice gesture from the server. Oh, that's too good. That backhand again. The mechanics of this side here are really stupendous for Agassi as well. Now, you watch him here. He gets in the hat. Lasik is already in trouble, and he knows it. Now Agassi lines up for this one there. Now, take a look at this. Stay with us for a second. At this point, freeze it for me there, boys. Now, we'll take a look at this. See how many options he has. Well, he chooses the one down the line. It's way out of reach. Classic nowhere near it. Clean winner. Break point. Another break. Andre Agassi is rattling the fences out here tonight. Agassi leads four He's already up 4-1, first set. Andre Agassi is playing a lot higher Seats, than his eighth seating right now. He's playing terrific looking tennis. CFL football comes your way Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna be Las Vegas against the Toronto Argonauts. Four U.S. teams are new this year, including uh, Baltimore, the Pirates, Las Vegas Posse. Andre Agassi will be cheering for them. That's where he's from. Sacramento Gold Miners. 15 love. Well, you don't really see Andre Agassi going away any tonight, do you? No, not for a minute. I mean, he would really have to just uh, stop concentrating for this to become a match. <laughs> which, which we've seen more than once from him. Great effort from Lasik. Really, his first big winner of this match. This was a terrific passing shot from Lasik. Kind of thing he's going to have to do a lot more of. Now, Agassi doesn't find himself often in the position when he's at the net and vulnerable to a passing shot. He usually hits a better approach. Oh! It's been a little bit hard for Lasek to impose himself on this match so far tonight. Yeah, if you've got somebody who is playing as well as Agassi is right now, you pretty much just got to let the waves kind of roll over your head and see <laughs> oh, that's what a nice happens. Attitude. And then, well, then hope things change because there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. He's got game point. Oh, you... 
<laughs> Stopped himself. Jeez. I like the microphone deal now as well. Oh, Let's talk great. about the change, how you can hear what the players are saying on the court. They turned that off. That was the anti Mackinac uh, microphone. It's back on. It was it was turned off in 1991. <coughs> One more good change in recent weeks. Yeah, a lot of help from the net, and now, after all, Classic's got a break point chance. Advantage Classic. Let's see what he does with it. His first chance. See, see, that's the approach shot again. I mean, you give him a shot, he comes into the net, you know. He doesn't have to volley that well, because nine times out of ten, he's got his guy so far out of play that the point's as good as over. Advantage Jackson. That is okay, a Agassi. great serve from Agassi there. Big knee bend, and then he throws himself into the first serve and hits it flat. 5-1. Agassi leads by game First set. That's what Andre has done so far in 94. Really hasn't played that much, Cliff. Hardcourt record is not bad. Las Vegas is hardcourt territory. That's where he was born. That's where he grew up playing tennis. So this is obviously going to be his favorite surface. Having said that, guy gets to two French Open finals and wins Wimbledon on grass. That was the most surprising Grand Slam result probably of the last decade. Agassi winning on grass. Nobody to bet on that. I didn't. Love 15. He was seated 12 there a couple of years ago when he did it. And he was down a break in the fifth set against Goran Ivanisevic and still figured out a way to win it. to hit a desperation forehand it flies on him Love 30. Jakob Lasek's year in review actually he was under 50 percent last year all year hasn't been a good couple of years for him Sun City semi-finalist that's uh, in South Africa about an hour and a half drive from Johannesburg he beat Wayne Ferreira there and Thomas Muster until Marcus Zucker of Germany took him out Love 30. <laughs> Love 40. And a double fall gives Andre Agassi a couple of set points to play around with. There it is. Game first set, Boy, that didn't take long. 27 minutes ago, the you first set please. started. Andre Agassi took it easily. Back at the center court, used to be in the old days, with the old rules, you'd have to wait here, you know, because the players would be just about to start. But up here Behind in the, the upper Safe levels, Quickly, now, you know, a lot of people are going to like sitting in the upper levels because it means that they get to move around during play. With the new ATP Tour rules, things have loosened up a bit. Love 15. I like what Andre Agassi said when people were asking him last week about the rule changes. He said, why don't we just, why? he says, let's try, every, let's try everything. Let's try anything. Yeah, nice <laughs> attitude. I like that. Yeah. Fifteen. 
Agassi feels so strongly that grassroots tennis has been ignored in our country that what he ha he's got in his head because then how big would this go? He wants to he wants to go to like ten different cities, go into the inner cities, set up a couple of makeshift tennis courts, and start that's playing with a yeah, bunch I of love kids. It. I think that's and how great. big would that be? Yeah, I got a couple of ideas too on that subject for a lot of these players to get involved in grassroots tennis because that's that's where we need these superstars. Fifteen on. And they'll do it. They're ready. You think so? Uh huh. I do. I know it. I've talked to a lot of them. Ooh. See, his problem now is he's trying for too much from the baseline. You cannot make that mistake. You have to be prepared to spend a lot of time there running very quickly to track down Agassi's shots, or you're going to come second. He's trying to out-hit Agassi, and that's not a good idea. Yeah, this is a good play from Hlasek. He comes in here now. He, you know, having said that he shouldn't be hitting the ball too hard, he hits this one very hard, comes in, and then has the easy overhead put away. 30 all. Pressuring Agassi, and if you hit the good approach, I see the dangerous thing there is if you try to make that approach and you don't hit it well, then you're in real trouble on the passing shot. But that one he clipped perfectly. Agassi could not get to it in time to make the passing shot. So he's got a break point. Hasn't broken yet. <laughs> you heard it. That's right. Huge. Good shot. Again, uh, if you're going to hit the ball back to Agassi, you're going to have to get it deep because he just eats those those short balls. Well, now, take a look at this one here. Let's get a freeze on this one. Right there at this knee bend position. You see how his left arm is pointing at the ball. His shoulder is, is sideways to the net and more. And now he swings into it from there. He uncoils. He opens the net. Now, bam, into it. See how high he is above the ground, too? He's at least a foot in the air when he makes contact with it. Looking at birds up there. <laughs> a whole flock. And I'm not talking about the seagulls. Australian kind of birds. No, no, no. He just tried to knock a couple out of the way. All of a sudden, we had an Alfred Hitchcock movie on our hands. <laughs> is deuce. <laughs> Advantage Agassi. from the back clean winner. It's been all Andre Agassi so far. Between the lines, that first set only took about a half hour, and the numbers were a little depressing for Jakob Lasek. 53% first service against 95%. Didn't start out that way. Agassi in the second set, but I tell you what. Look at this. this <laughs> some people just like watching it on TV. Oh, yeah, 
world, baby. <laughs> that thing lands anywhere close to the serve line, and he might as well say a prayer because Agassi just moves into the ball so well. Just take a look at him moving forward, isn't he? Does he stop for a minute? Bam! No! He keeps going in, and then uh, Lasik just says, what the heck? Nothing to do. TMG. Too much game this kid's got. Low 15. You know, it is interesting to watch these two. You see Agassiz on the on the baseline, and Hlasek is about five, six feet behind the baseline, so he's just playing him like a yo-yo back there, even though he lost that point, 15 all. Cliff, okay, explain this to me, Cliff. Okay, you know, obviously Andre is playing sort of an incandescent form of tennis. Why isn't this guy winning everything he plays? Good question. How, why, why, what's the story? Good question. You can get I mean, to he, him. Looks, he looks fabulous. Yeah, but if me. you've got C uh, Sampras's kind of serve, for example, or a Michael Stick or something that can really make an impression on him on the serve, then he's in trouble. <laughs> and then remember what I said earlier to the, the percentages for him are not very good. I mean, his margin for it. error is not that good. If he's playing well, he's in terrific shape. But when you play that kind of do or die tennis, things can turn bad. When you lose confidence, it can go downhill in a hurry. It's not going to happen tonight, though. 30. The thing that he has to do is he's got to volley very well, this kid, if he's going to make any impression at all. Now, let's take a look at this. He makes a good approach right now. He makes his move to the net. But watch this. He's got a very solid technical volley right there. Freeze it for me there. See how he keeps the wrist at this stage firm. The racket head is above the wrist, and it's way out in front. And that's Game very on. important. And now he's just served another big serve. Well, if Jakob Lasek wants to make a match of it, he's got to start holding. And he just did that. So that's kind of good news because that first set really ran away from him. Let that ball drop. He just let it drop. He's throwing it a little further over left. I wonder what he said. I couldn't hear that. Uh, he, he's making fun of his serve tonight. Yeah. He, I heard him say tonight. Remember in that last game, he wasn't getting any first serves in. That was his first double of the match. That's a really terrific shot from Agassi. Uh, just to keep himself in that point, didn't end up winning it, but... Boy, he has got some strength. Watch this, how he completely is wrong-footed and still is able to come back. Now, here's the volley, and as he's heading one way, but can still get back to it, put it up, and then Lasek puts the overhead away. That was a big return of serve that he missed right there because it would have given him a couple of break points. You've got to at least make the serve a play. Winners and errors are still... All Agassi, the Lasek has come up with some nice points. Agassi's problem is he's serving at 45%, so he's working harder on serve than he should. <laughs> he 
even he smiles. I like that. 40 30. That had to feel pretty nice coming off of his strings and Andre Agassi now with game point. Yeah, the thing is that uh, he was at 95 percent in the in the first set, Agassi. First serves. <laughs> game Agassi. Holds on anyway. Working around his own serve, Andre Agassi, Agassi with a 2-1 lead in the second. Jakub Lasek trying to hang on in this second set, serving now on serve at 1-2. He's had a pretty long and, and pretty good-looking career in singles and doubles, Jakub Lasek. 15 love. That's his first ace of the night. You remember the time he shaved his hair? In fact, he and Guy Fourget <laughs> both shaved their hair when they headed down to Australia and won the 1990 ATP Tour Doubles Championships. He's won 18 in all. He's a very solid doubles player. 15 all. But he and Guy got together and said, listen, if we make it to right. the finals, we're both going to shave our hair. And then one of them arrived in Geneva, and one of them hadn't shaved the hair. I forget which one. He said, you better do it. So they went into the locker and, cha and, and shaved it. Ball. <gasps> It's just growing back now. <laughs> 15 all. It's growing straight up. <laughs> 15 yeah, too much power on that caused Lasek to make contact a bit late. Again, Andre Agassi is playing doubles here, which is always a nice thing to see. They had to save four match points in a doubles match last night. <laughs> 15 40. Break points coming up. That's just a good return of serve there again from Agassi. Lusick is taking his life in his hands when he comes to the net, but in a way he has to, to beat Agassi because staying back with him is not going to work the way Agassi's playing right now. Agassi and Grab, a wild card entry, beat Scott Davis and Todd Martin. Top spin lob is good. Game, Game is history. Break it, sir. Agassi leads 3 1. See, this is a terrific shot. Now, take a look at it. Freeze it right there. You see how he had just before he made contact with the ball, let the racket head drop that time. So he comes from low to high, goes, finishes high. That's what gives him the top spin. But it is not until the last second that he do makes that move and Lasek had no way to anticipate it. Agassi talking to the crowd again. That's one of the things that endears him to people. He is not afraid to, to talk to the crowd, get them involved. I couldn't tell. It's pretty close, but I don't know what it... Yeah, well, David uh, Krumble in the chair is not going to overrule. That was too far away from him. He can overrule, but it's got to be a clear mistake. 15 love. 30 love. You see now, Cliff, he's, do, he's being smart at because he's spinning those first serves in until he gets his rhythm back. Now just kind of bend him in there. Get your swing rocking again. Another one. <laughs> 40 love. It's the flatness of his ground strokes that is so tough to overcome. The flatter you hit the ball, the lower it stays. Not up. Not up. 40 15. See if it was in fact not up because he wasn't real happy with this core. Take a look at it. Let's see. Let's see. Right there. It looked to me like it was up. Actually, it was definitely up. Yeah. Anyway, it's 40-15, and <laughs> another game, game has gone by. Andre Agassi slashing his way into the third Agassi round. Agassi leads four games to one.
Yaka Plasek is in an awful lot of trouble. Down 6-1 and now 1-4 on serve. On the deuce, Saturday, 10.30 a.m. live. It's the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The inductees include Tony Dorsett, Randy White, Leroy Kelly, Jackie Smith, and Jimmy Johnson Love of the San Francisco 49ers. First point to Agassi. Oh, love 30. He is hitting the ball just as crisply as I have seen him do in a long time. I mean, it's like he knows exactly what he's doing. He stretches for this one. Now he gets his balance. Now he sees the approach shot, and he is in perfect balance here. He has plenty of time as he swings. Now he goes from here straight through the ball. Bam, clean winner. Uh, Cl Clip, you're going to have to explain this to me again. In, in Washington D in last ter last week, the tournament last week, he lost to Brett Stephen of, of New Zealand. Zealand. I mean, and now here he is coming up with this kind of tennis one week later. Go figure. Nice shot from Lotsa from well back. Had to come up with a winner, and he did. Why is a good uh, Davis Cup player, Mary? Because he, he likes to zero in on matches. And it, it's a, the problem for him is to play seven of them. Here's the replay again. Now, this is a good move from him because it changes things up. He doesn't very often approach off the serve like that. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice from both guys. Agassi moving very well. And there he was putting his backside in one of our cameras. There's another, there's another look. I mean, he really moved for this one. Look at that. Can't stop himself, so he says. Take a seat right here. <laughs> right here? <laughs> 30 on. Oh! Thirty forty. He has got such good racket preparation on the ball that even when he kind of blocks it back like that, he can hit him for clean winners. That's a terrific shot. Break point. Agassi. Agassi leads five games to one. Andre Agassi now just one game from the next round. This match is only 50 minutes old, and it's not like he's playing a tomato can. I mean, Jakob Lasek isn't playing bad tennis, but he is still being comprehensively beaten. <laughs> And touch is such a wonderful play when you've got so much power. Coach and player, Brad Gilbert, likes what he sees. Andre Agassi tonight is in severely beautiful form. 15 love. 30 love. He, he's just taken Lasek totally out of this. There's only one person that the people are watching, and it's not this guy. That shot was just a little too adorable. <laughs> 30 15. It's almost like he's apologizing for it. 30 15. 40 15. A couple of match points now. Just wanted to club that one home. You can still play with a match point. No! That one drifts long. It just seems to me... He has just never for one moment, sometimes he's been barking at himself or some poor serving or whatever, but he has never once been worried tonight. A 
Vonda Jagasi. One more match point. Game set match Agassi. 6 1, 6 1. Six one, six one, and it wasn't even that close. And now for the ceremonial send off of the shirts. I've seen people tackle each other for one of those. He does know how to ham it up. Andre Agassi will be speaking in just a few moments with our own Cliffy Drysdale, who's thrown a shirt or two in his day. We'll be back to have a talk with the winner tonight. And we'll have more action from the Canadian Open when we come back. Stay with us. There's a lucky guy who caught the shirt Agassi flung just a few minutes ago. And in fact, now Andre Agassi, we mentioned before, he and Michael Chang staged a wonderful charity exhibition here a couple of nights ago. Right now on the court, Andre is being presented with an IBM ATP Tour Inner City Children's Fund. He's going to be presenting a check to, uh, there's a big old check. It's, it's always nice to see the players giving back something and Agassi speaks more than most of the players about uh, giving back to the game. Michael Chang, who next plays tennis on this court, he is in fact the chairman of the IBM ATP Charities and he's doing a very good job this year of that. Anyway, as this goes on, uh, Andre's got to receive a, or give back a check, so we'll be talking to him in just a few moments. Hang around with him, we'll see if Andre Agassi can talk as well as he can walk. Back at the Players Limited International Canadian Open, Andre Agassi put on a clinic against Jakob Lasek, killed the guy. One and one them, in fact. And he's down at courtside right now with Cliff Drysdale. Mary, thanks a lot. I'm with Andre Agassi. Congratulations, Andre. This is uh, about as good a stuff as you could possibly have played tonight. I mean, uh, you didn't miss a ball. <laughs> you know, Cliff, this has been the form that I've been waiting for. I mean, I guess a smile on my face says it all. It's something that... Uh, uh, when you when you play at such a high level like the, like tonight it, and you can do it once it makes you always want to come out here and do it again and I've struggled through the clay season but tonight was a great hump for me I feel to come out here and to stay that consistent not easy to win a match one on one especially against a guy like Lassick and that's that's exactly what I'm looking for your coach tells me that you're like 10 months pregnant you're just waiting to pop out <laughs> and he said he can hardly wait for that to happen and it seemed to happen tonight for you there's no question about it you know I think I found my game this week after watching I spent about six days before today you know just working on my game and doing a bunch of different things and I even came off the practice court and said to some of the guys, he said, how are you hitting the ball? I said, it's the best I've hit the ball in maybe a couple years. And uh, tonight is definitely a reflection of that. What makes the difference? How come seven days ago, let's say you can lose to a Brett Steven, and now you look like there's nobody in the world could beat you? Well, you know, I think part has to do with the first tournament back from grass courts at Wimbledon, you know, getting comfortable again. But to, to me, the, the difference is just moving my feet and taking that ball early again. You know, when in these base, baseline rallies, to take that ball early and get them on the defensive has always been my strength. And I think over the past few weeks and with the clay, I found myself a bit uncomfortable drifting behind the baseline. And I think Stevens found himself actually in the match. But if I'm stepping forward like this and hitting this well, I like my chances. The other thing that your coach told me, and I said to him, what are you guys doing? He said, we're not really working on any strokes at all, but you're in very good shape and that you're working a lot more now on your serve, just practicing the serve a lot more than you used to. Yeah, the serve, well, the doubles is key for me, too. I'm playing doubles here with Jim Grab, and that's helped me on the serve and also the volley. But most importantly is just using my sh my my physical, you know, being in shape to really run down a lot of balls and make these guys feel like they're going to have to do it for two or three sets to beat me. I think right now the tendency is to believe if they just hang in there long enough, then they can get me to crack. But if I can just stay on them, 
like I do in the Davis Cup play, then I, I, I like my chances going into the Open this year. You like to get into like one match. We're bringing up Davis Cup. You know, I always felt that you were a great Davis Cup player because for you, it seemed to be so easy to zero in just on one match and, and, and like you're a big match player. Is that true of you? Well, you know what? Uh, one of my weaknesses, if, if you know, is, is the fact that I, I haven't maintained that consistency in my game. Uh, my ability to play at an incredible level, I've, I've proven that to myself over and over again, is to do it day after day which has been my struggle in Davis Cup it's it's all you practice all week for that one or two matches and and there's there's just no escaping the fact you're going to go out there and give it everything you have and I think that's been something I haven't done I've gotten down on myself in the past and Davis Cup there's no room for that it's for your country give it everything win or lose and and that's what I'm looking for that kind of uh, uh, passion and enthusiasm out there uh, that's not to say that you haven't done great in Grand Slam championships. Let's see, two finals at the French Championships, finalists at the US Open. You've won Wimbledon. That's a two-week deal where you've got to win seven matches. Are you going to get back into that frame of mind where people are going to start saying once again, Andre Agassi may win another big one? I don't think I'm going to be at rest until I do, to be quite honest. It's something that's very important to me. and something I'm committed to, absolutely, 100%. How about next round? David Wheaton. Uh, David is a dangerous player. You know, his record against me now is three and two. He has me beat by one. You know, he takes big chances off the ground, and uh, he serves in volleys. And if he's serving real well and and volleying real well, and you know, I mean, he's looking just to take control of every point and to take chances. I think if I can stay on him mentally and and, and stay in and make him stay out there a long time and hit have to hit a lot of balls, I think I can get errors from him and you know take control of the match. I, I feel good about my chances, but he's definitely somebody I'm to give a lot of respect to. Is he the kind of guy that you don't like to play? I mean, the serve and volley type of player, or does it matter? Uh, you know, serve and volleyers. I've always I've always loved playing against the guys that keep coming at me because it really gets me into the ball. And if my feet aren't excited, I'm not in position. I'm losing the point. Right. It's the baseliners that are kind of more lethargic and kind of yeah. move. Sometimes they can you know get me in a real lackadaisical frame of mind. So I like my, my, my chances against a serving volleyer, but David is the kind of guy that takes such big chances off the ground that if he is having that good day, he can beat anybody. So it's important for me to go out there and be returning well, moving well, and hopefully uh, get him to make some mistakes. Hey, thanks for the time. Great stuff tonight. Well. Played good tennis. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thanks. All right. Mary, let's go back to you. Thanks, Cliff. Well, Andre Agassi only had to play for about 50 minutes tonight. If you want to watch him play anymore, we're going to have the Wheaton-Agassi match. In fact, we'll have a look at the whole draw when we get back. Stay with us. Andre Agassi trying to get himself back to the locker room, but it'll take a while. He is being besieged by fans in the minutes after his terrific-looking win over Jakob Lasek. Because he killed him, we're going to actually be able to show you some bonus, bonus coverage of Michael Chang taking on the Brit, Jeremy Bates. First, let's have a look at what this draw looks like now, going into the third round. The top seed, Sergi Bruguera, really beat up today. He played very, very well against Jim Grab and came through easily. Only one seed has fallen out of the top half, and that was on the very first day when the ninth seed, Patrick Raptor, lost. Again, Michael Chang and uh, Jeremy Bates are going to be coming up. Wheaton and Agassi, we will have that match on ESPN tomorrow. Malavia, Washington, the 14th seed is through. Lendl, 0 and 0 today against Wally Masur. That's not easy to do in the pros. He'll next play Wayne Pereira. On the bottom half, seeds have fallen all over the place. The number five seed, Peter Korda, he lost to the Swede, Enfist. Jaime Iziga is Enfist's next opponent. Chuck Adams had a good win over Aaron Krikstein, and Jim Courier had a good-looking match against Nicholas Pereira of Venezuela. Mark Rosse, the seventh seed, is through. He next plays Jason Stoltenberg, who knocked out the lone remaining Canadian in the draw, Daniel Nestor. Richie Renneberg came through. That was a tough match. He was having a three-setter with Stefano Pescosolido of Italy. Amis Monsdorf. Um, they were going into the third set, he and Todd Martin, but Martin was forced to retire with a right leg injury. So as you can see, the bottom half has bottomed out a bit, and it looks pretty good for Jim Courier, the fourth seed, to come on through. Agassi and Courier, to me, boy, that could be a final on Sunday, but we're still pretty far away from that. Agassi still trying to make his way back, and will be back after these messages. Please stay with us. Second round coverage of the Players Limited International Canadian Open continues.